Hello, I'm NASA astronaut Jessica Meir. I recently spent 205 days on board the International Space Station. This is Ask NASA. Hello, my name is Sana. When people practice to be astronauts, how do they practice? You can't just pull away um, gravity from a place. No, you can't because it's invisible. You can't see it. So how do they practice? Well, Santa, that is a great question. It is something that all of the NASA engineers and personnel have been perfecting on the ground for us in order to train us effectively as astronauts. We do it underwater in a really big pool called the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. Underwater, we can mimic some of those effects. We can maintain what we call neutral buoyancy, where we don't float up and we don't sink down. We also have an entire replica of the International Space Station, where we can learn and train in the inside of the space station. It was really interesting for a launch because we have spent so many hours training and learning how to fly the spacecraft. I actually had to remind myself Wow, this is real this time. So it was incredibly exciting to finally start feeling those things. You could feel the engines ignite and you can feel the acceleration on your body. And then after only about eight minutes, you're suddenly weightless. And then you would realize, okay, this is real. This one's going to actually carry me to space. We are able to bring a few items with us, some personal items that you want to support throughout your mission. One of the things that I brought was my piccolo. I also flew my panda bear, Pandemonium, who has been with me since I was six years old. He's been to the Antarctic, he's been traveling all around the planet, and now he's also been to space. So for me, my schedule, I was able to maintain about the same number of hours. Some people sleep much better in space than they do on Earth because they don't have things like sore knees or backs without gravity pushing down on you. What we have is a sleeping bag and we have that up against one of the walls and it's strapped to one of the walls so that you can kind of keep yourself in position. I would zip myself in the sleeping bag and I also had a little belt that I wrapped around the middle and I could put my arms down and try to keep them down sometimes. Sometimes I actually slept with my arms up over my head like that. Usually people like to secure themselves a little bit so you're not just kind of free floating everywhere and then kind of waking yourself up. Just like everything else, going to the bathroom in space is something that you have to get used to. One of the best things is to get training from all of your crewmates that have already been up there and already used to using everything like the toilet. And how that works, we actually use like a vacuum system. So imagine if you have a vacuum cleaner and you're sucking things down. We turn on a big fan, so that's pulling everything down into the toilet. We have a long funnel that we use to collect all of the urine. And then there's another seat that you can sit on, again, with that fan pulling things through to collect everything and keep it contained, which of course is the most important part on the space station. You don't want to have everything floating around, floating around. And it was really interesting for me in the beginning, in those first few days, your body is sensing things differently too without gravity. You know, everything, including your internal organs, everything is kind of lifted up. And so some of those pressure sensors that give you that feeling that you need to go to the bathroom, that feeling of fullness in your bladder, that takes a little bit of time to adjust to space as well. We're actually getting a new toilet on board the International Space Station. This new toilet is going to be a little bit easier to use for both men and women. Of course, there are some anatomical differences and some of the earlier versions didn't take into account everything equally kind of for both men and women. So this one should be a little bit easier to use for everybody. It'll also increase the capacity. We'll have another toilet on board the space station. We can continue to test and refine these technologies that will be used on the future in the Orion spacecraft when astronauts return to the moon. Most female astronauts actually suppress their menstrual cycle when we go on our space missions, just to make things a little bit more convenient. It certainly is not a requirement. All of those functions can go exactly as they do down on Earth. We have supplies up there as needed, and we can accommodate it with all of the hardware that we have for the toilet. 
to wash our hair, we take a drink bag, just like the normal drink bags we use. So I'll get my hair nice and wet, and you have to just take that water and get it touch right up to your hair so that it sticks under your hair, and then you'll rinse it all around, apply your shampoo, rinse it again, and then towel it off. It's pretty similar to washing your hair on the ground. The food that we eat on the International Space Station is delicious these days. It's really not that kind of freeze-dried ice cream thing that people have this idea that we eat. We have an entire lab at the NASA Johnson Space Center that is always developing new and delicious foods. And I was even a subject for an experiment up there called food physiology, where I had a whole different kind of menu. Things like more fishes, higher omega-3s, more lycopene, more vegetables. I would say the only thing that is lacking as sort of a foodie here on Earth is the presentation. You never forget that first moment when the hatch opens and you take your first movements out of the space station and into the void of space. Nothing else between my boots and the Earth below and you get much more of a sense of motion when you're on a spacewalk of how quickly we're moving, passing over the Earth, 17,500 miles per hour, going around the entire planet every 90 minutes. You're in this spacesuit and your body is kind of at a strange angle and it's 450 pounds of mass that you need to move around and every movement is pressurized with your hands. Every once in a while though, you do need to remind yourself just to take a moment and enjoy what you're doing, appreciate it. Christina and I both felt so privileged to have had any type of role in that historic event. And for us, I think it was the most important, not for our personal achievements, but really for the generations of women and minorities that were pushing the envelope when we didn't have a seat at the table. But that day, so many people were watching and so many people were excited. People of all ages, young girls, young boys too. And one of the things that it brought to mind was that anybody can accomplish their dream. No matter who we are, what we look like, or what our background is, those possibilities are open to everybody. Do you have a question for NASA? Write to us or send in your video using the hashtag AskNASA.